Is this good? Yep. Okay, let's get started. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Michael Atala, and today's video is going to be talking about how I was able to get into Harvard at 15 years old. So for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm a third year undergraduate student here at the University of Waterloo in Toronto, Canada, and I'm currently in pre-med. So I'm gonna split up this video into four different sections. The first section is gonna be, what is the program that I was in? The second section will be, where did I live while I was in this program? The third section will be, how much does this program cost? And the last section will be, how to apply for this program. Or you know what? Before we get started, we need to have some coffee. Nothing like that first sip of coffee. Now let's get started. So the program that I got into is called the Secondary School Program, and it's open to high school students. So it's open to grade 10, 11, and 12 if you're in Canada, or it's open to sophomores, juniors, or seniors in America. The only other requirement is that you have to be at least 15 years old when the program starts, and you cannot turn 19 before the program ends. Now, once you do get into this program, you have the option of taking either two half year courses or one full year course. So an example of two half year courses would be like calculus one and for example, accounting. An example of a full credit course would be organic chemistry one and organic chemistry two. So you would take both of those in one summer. I wouldn't recommend that just because you wouldn't have the opportunity to try many different courses because the whole point of this program is to allow students to, you know, step out of their comfort zone and to expand their resume. And this does really help out if you're applying in the States or if you're applying in Canada or if you're applying abroad. When universities see this on your resume, it does really make you stand out against all the other applicants. Now we're going to talk about where I lived when I got into the program. So 50% of the people that got into the program were international. So all of those had to live on campus, which included myself, my roommate who was from Brazil, um, my, my other roommate who was from China because I had four roommates, and the other 50% of the people were from America. So they had the option of either living on campus or commuting. However, most of them weren't from Boston, so a lot of them did live on campus, and I would recommend that you do so if you do get in, because within the secondary school program, there's different games and different events that take place. I remember when I was there, I played on dodgeball and basketball intramurals, and there was also different events throughout the week, like there was a gala, we had a dance, there's also other parties that happen on campus, and of course you don't want to miss those. So there are two different types of room accommodations, I guess you could say, if you do live on campus. The first is just a double room, and you could either be paired with a random, or if you know someone that does get into the program, both of you could live together. Now, if you do live in a suite, there's a three person, a four person, and a five person suite. However, the suites aren't like one huge room with like five beds or four beds or three beds. Like the suite I was in was a five person suite and it had four rooms. It had three single rooms and one double room. So three people lived in their own room. Now I was in the double room and I stayed with someone that I met there you know, first the first time ever, and he was from Brazil, and we actually built a great friendship there. And I would recommend that if you do get in, that you do do that, because it helps you, first of all, create friendships right then and there, but it also helps you meet new people, help you step out of your comfort zone, you know, help you form new connections here and there. Like the guy that I met from Brazil, we created a great connection, and when I did go to Brazil two years ago with my family, we I actually did end up meeting up with him, and he showed us around. So like that connection helped me out later on in life. Now again, because we're in the pandemic, this whole living situation won't happen this summer, but if you do apply and you watch this video after, I guess, 2020 and you do want to apply or you want you want to apply next year or the year after that, then this campus living hopefully will apply and hopefully they'll open the restrictions and allow people to live there. Now we're going to talk about how much does the program cost? Like I said earlier, you have the option of taking either two half year credits or one full year credit. Now the half year credit costs 3,400 US dollars per course. So if you take two half year courses, that'll equate to $6,800 for both courses combined. Or if you take a full year course, that'll cost 6,800 US dollars. There's also a $75 non-refundable fee that you pay for your application. Now, since we're in a pandemic right now, no one can go and live on campus. So those are essentially all the costs you're gonna have to pay if you do apply this summer. However, when I went, which was about five years ago or so, I also had to pay for housing, I had to pay for food, I had to pay for anything else that I wanted to buy aside from all of that. So let's say you're watching this video and Corona has already passed, you know, we're done with it and everything, then you would have to add on top of that 6,875 US dollars, the price of housing and the price of eating. 
So I don't remember the exact number when I was there, but I remember that housing was around 6,000 US dollars extra and the cost of eating was around 4,000 US dollars extra. Now food is like an open buffet there. You get breakfast, you get lunch, you get dinner, and you get a midnight snack. The place where we eat is called Annerberg Hall, and that's the place where you get an open buffet style. So I'll, I'll put a picture down below here, and the place actually does look like Hogwarts. Just imagine eating with Harry, Ronald, and Hermione all together while Dumbledore is giving his speech, and that's basically what was going on when we were in Harvard. And you can't really go into the hall any other time other than those four times because you do have a limit per day. But the good thing about it is, like I said before, it's open buffet, but then you could also add on top of that. So I remember when I was in Harvard, I was dieting. So I always wanted chicken breast and there usually wasn't chicken breast on the menu. So there's actually a section in the hall itself where you can go and you could set up your own meals. So you can make it gluten free. If you're vegan and you want a certain food, you could do that. If you're vegetarian, you could also do that. They can make whatever food you want as long as you let them know like 15 minutes in advance. So what I used to do, I used to get into the hall. First thing I would do is go to the place where I can order, order like four chicken breasts. While those are setting up, I would fill up on salad, eat salad with my friends, have a good time. Then I'd come back, get those chicken breasts, eat them and be on my way. The program also does offer financial aid and there's different deadlines for it that I'm going to include right here. So if you do want to apply for financial aid and go to this program, it's totally possible. So you should check that out. However, financial aid is actually only open to American residents. So that's why I couldn't really apply to it. Now the final thing I'm going to talk about is how to apply to this program. So I'm going to include a screenshot of all the deadlines that are due right here. Um, so there's two different deadlines. First is the early application deadline, which is on January 26th. I would recommend that you apply to the early application one because it is a rolling basis. So if they do reach the cap early, then they're going to stop accepting people. Now the regular application deadline is on March 4th. If you also do want to apply to financial aid, you'll be able to see the deadlines for all of that here as well. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and like down below. And I guess I'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Bye.